Okay, hi guys. Um, this is just a little update on the previous couple of videos that uh, that I did uh, demonstrating the Amiga 500 uh, Mr. FPGA. So this is just to show you a couple of bits that I hadn't previously covered off uh, and I suspect this will be the last in the series. So um, for those of you that haven't seen the previous videos, uh, it's essentially an Amiga 500 Plus case with an original Amiga 500 keyboard and a Mr. FPGA stack, uh, so a DE10 Nano, uh, an analog uh, I.O. board and a, a powered USB hub inside the machine with the addition of some uh, DB9 uh, joystick adapters. But what I've also added is a DB9 to USB adapter for the mouse so we can now use an original Amiga tank mouse. Now I've got a couple of variants. I've got one from a supplier in Canada and one from a supplier in the Philippines. I'll put both links on the video in case you want to check them out. Not a great deal to choose between them. Uh, this is the uh, the one from the supplier in the Philippines, but the others work fine as well. So let me fire this up um, and I'll show you what's what. Uh, there's one other small addition. So this is on the AC feed into the power supply rather than the DC or low voltage feed into the Mr. FPGA, just because I was finding that uh, sometimes I'd get a little bit of voltage drop with the inline power supply on the, uh, on the low voltage DC. So there you go, power on there. And we should see the machine start up. There you go, comes up pretty quick. Okay, and you'll see that you have to wait just a little while before everything initializes. You can see there the Wi-Fi has now come up and we haven't quite got the, uh, the Bluetooth yet, but that will be on its way. Okay, there we go. So that's everything. Now, even though I'm a, a sucker for old school, uh, for some of the other, other cores, the arcade cores, actually a games controller with a few more buttons is kind of useful. So in this case, we're pairing this controller. This is an Xbox One controller using Bluetooth. But you can happily either plug in a, a USB controller or um, a DB9 controller, like a Competition Pro Speedlink, something of that ilk. Okay, so I'll show you the Amiga quickly for those of you that haven't already seen it. So you can see the, uh, the tank mouse working and then I think we'll show you one other core, maybe one of the arcade cores, perhaps one of the CPS2 uh, cores, just to see what that's like, because it's pretty cool actually. Okay, so if we go into a list of computers, the other thing that I didn't point out on the previous videos was that uh, I've sorted the um, the cores names um, using a script uh, just to keep it tidy so it's easy to find things. So you can see here for the most part they're pretty much in alphabetical order. I think they are actually all in alphabetical order. So we've got all the Commodore machines here nice and easy. So if we fire up the Amiga there okay, so you can see here that the, uh, the drive light's working. It's worth pointing out actually that it's only gonna work with this core as it stands when it's accessing the uh, the hard drive. Obviously the hard drive is just um, an HDF file in this instance, but it won't actually work uh, when you're accessing the, uh, the floppy drive, albeit an ADF file. Um, that would be a nice touch, but hardly the end of the world. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is Amiga OS 3.2. Uh, with the 3.2 ROM. Now, if everything's playing ball, we should be able to surf the web via the, uh, the PPP listener. There you go. Never gonna be fast, as I probably mentioned before, but it does work pretty well. Okay, so there you go. Uh, inline images are all working. Obviously, being an original Amiga tank mouse, there's no scrolly wheel. <laughs> Can't miss that. But uh, nonetheless, pretty cool to have an original Amiga mouse working. Okay, I'll come out of there. The rest of it I've already covered pretty much on the other videos, so I'm not gonna go into any real detail here. But we'll show you iGame working. And there we go. And if we have a quick look at, oh, let's see, Pac-Man. You can see we've got the old work for that. Now, if I can find it, I'll put the uh, the link up to Pac-Man. This was uh, a new find for me. Uh, 
on YouTube. I saw the uh, demo that someone had put up and it's very close to the, uh, the original. It's actually really good. But you can see if we go into Pac-Mania or Walker or whatever else, they're all there. Okay, so we've covered off the Amiga previously, so I'm not gonna go into too much more detail on that one. If we press the help button, which we've mapped to the menu, again, as we've covered previously, we go into the core menu. Let's go back up to the top. Okay, this time we'll go into Arcade and we'll go into Organized. We'll go into Collections, we'll go into Mr. Core. This is done using a, a couple of additional scripts. I'll try and link those for you in the description. So if you want to do this yourself, it will make a little easier. CPS2, maybe one of the Street Fighter games. Okay, this is where our um, Xbox One controller or whatever your your choice of games controller is with a few more buttons than a Competition Pro <laughs> is gonna come in kind of useful. So you can see there, we've got all the key moves, which we wouldn't be able to uh, to map on a standard old school joystick. So we'll grab a couple of characters here. Okay, that will probably do. It's not really to demonstrate the gameplay so much as um, the fact that it's running a CPS2 game very well. So we'll come out of there and go back into the core menu. Come back up to the top. I'll show you one more. We'll look at the Acorn Archimedes. There's something to bear in mind with this actually when you're using just a two button mouse. Okay, so Acorn Archimedes, uh, great core, but um, the Acorn Archimedes originally had a three button mouse and it's designed for a three button mouse, which uh, you'll know if you've used it. And obviously we've only got two mouse buttons. So way around that, go into the menu on the core and enable swap to stroke three button. And then when we right click, that's effectively our middle button. So there you go. We get the menu options as we'd expect if we were to, uh, to click the middle button. Okay, that's about it. Did say it was just a quick update. I don't think there's much more to do on this machine. It pretty much works. It's had a couple of outings. People seem to enjoy using it, going back, playing some of the, uh, the retro games on it. So um, the only other thing to show you actually is the, um, the box that it's gonna go in. Okay, so um, I've already constructed the box. Hopefully you'll be able to see this okay. So this looks like well, pretty much looks like an original Commodore Amiga 500 plus box, but this is actually a reproduction, which I bought from Retro Passion. That's it. That's the end of my project, or this one at least. So I hope you enjoyed guys, and um, maybe that's given you some ideas. Uh, if you do end up producing uh, some variants yourself, then please do uh, post some comments. Be really interested to see what you come up with. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers for now.